Hey y'all, and welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're going to tackle Lika Problem 199, Binary Tree Right Side View. After that, we'll cover two actual variants of the original question that Meta asks. And I will say they're both similar to one another, and it's a toss-up whether you get one or the other in an interview, but either way, it's worth knowing. Great, let's get started. Okay, so we're given the root of a binary tree. Here on the right-hand side, that's node 1. We want to return the values of the nodes ordered from top to bottom from the right side. So what is defined as the right side? Well, the description is actually pretty helpful, so we'll piggyback off of that. If you're standing on the right side of the tree, this is you, what nodes do you see from top down? Well, at the very top, node 1 is visible, right? On the next level, level 2, node 9 can be seen. Note here that node 5 is blocked from our view, so we don't consider it. On the last level, we see node 6, right? There's no node blocking it like this, node 4, so we totally see node 6. And you'll notice a pattern that it's always the last node in each level. This is a very important observation for later on in our code. But as per the problem statement, we want to return a list of these nodes. So we'll do just that. In our code, we'll call it something like this, result, and we'll populate like so. From top down, 1, 9, 6. Those are the nodes that we saw in that order, and there you go. And if it wasn't clear, what we're pushing is the node value, not the node memory address itself, but the integer value. And as an annoying edge case, we could be given a null pointer as a root also. So in this case, you just return an empty vector. And that makes sense. No nodes are visible if they don't even exist to begin with. Well, that makes sense and all, but how do we traverse this tree programmatically? If we wanted to scan each level from left to right and identify the last node on each level to add to our right side view, our result, then isn't a level order BFS traversal the perfect application? The breadth first cert allows us to go through the tree level by level from top down. And that's exactly what we want. The main data structure that BFS uses is a queue. But enough talk, let's go through a workflow of how that works exactly. Okay, first things first, we're going to seed our queue with the root node to kick off our while loop. So on each iteration of our while loop, we're going to do a few things. First, we're going to take note of the number of nodes in our queue. Here it's one, let's call that size. So this snapshots the number of nodes on the current level of the tree. And since that's the number of nodes on the current level, we can make use of that. We can write a nested for loop to loop size times, or in this case, once. But in general, on each iteration of our nested for loop, we're going to pop each node from our queue and have an if statement that hey if we're on the last node of the level aka the last index in our loop then we can push back that node's value into our, our result vector like so and to confirm indeed from the right side of the tree node 1 is the first node that is visible to us the last thing we'll do is add the left child to our queue and then the right child so we're going to add nodes 5 and 9 on the next iteration, we look at our queue, we have a size of 2. So let's modify our size to 2 now. And indeed, our second level has 2 nodes. We're going to have a nested loop to loop 2 times and eventually pop node 9. Okay, so the first node we process is node 5 in our queue. And this is the desired behavior. We want to process node 5 before node 9. Remember in the previous iteration, we added the root node's left child first before the right child. This is because a queue is first in, first out, so the first element in, namely the 5, will be the element that's processed first. We want this behavior because we want to iterate from left to right on each level, and the very end, of course, is our last node. Anyway, we pop node 5, ask the question, hey, is this the last node? No, it's not. We do not add it to our result. We do, however, add its children, 10 first, and then 3. We iterate the second and last time, pop the 9 and realize, hey, we're at the very last element in our nested for loop. 9 must be visible to us, and indeed, it's the next one we see. Let's add the integer 9 to our result. Last thing we'll do is add node 9's children. Looking at the left child, it does exist, so we're going to add node 6. 
However, it doesn't have a right child, which is totally fine. We just have a null check, and if it doesn't exist, we don't add it to our queue. You kind of get the idea. On the last level, taking a look at it, we have a size of three nodes on our current and last level. We loop through each one, node 10, not the last one, but also doesn't have any children, don't add anything to the queue. Same thing happens to node three, but when we're on the last iteration on node six, we say, hey, indeed, it's the last node in the level. We can see it at the very, very bottom. Let's add it to our result. And ultimately, those are the nodes that we can see from top bottom from the right side. As a worthy mention, there's a DFS solution as well, but since the two variants that Meta asks are typically coded in BFS, we're gonna opt for this BFS algorithm. The time complexity is big O n because we have to process every single node. The space complexity is also big O n in the worst case that you have a complete tree like this one. Come to think of it, we kind of did speak about each line of code of the algorithm. Let's actually write it up now. Recall an edge case where if the given root is null pointer, we just return an empty vector. After that, let's ready our variables. First off, we need a vector of ints to store our result. Let's just write that now so I don't forget that later on. And we also need our queue, right? It's going to hold the memory address of each node because we need to access their left and right children. Let's name a queue just for shorthand and let's seed our queue with the root like so. And let's enter our while loop that will keep iterating as long as our queue still has nodes to process. Now on each iteration, what do we do? Snapshot that variable size that represents the number of nodes on each level. And then we'll have a nested loop to iterate that many times. So sort of zero size times. And on each iteration of that, let's get a hold of the node that we're going to process. Remember to pop it so you don't have an infinite loop. And in the case that you're on the last loop of this for loop, which note the plus one, we're always off by one because vectors are zero indexed. Then we'll add that node value into our result. The last thing we wanna do is inspect its children that if the left child, first off, is not empty, that it actually exists, let's push it into our, our queue to be processed on the next level. Inversely, we're gonna have the same check on the right child. And we'll just push it if it exists. And there you have it. This algorithm really is just a modification of level order BFS traversal. We really only just added this line to get the right side view. Cool, and with that said, let's get into the first variant. Overall, I will say there's a small chance you'll be asked the original legal problem, but for most interviews, Meta does prefer the variants. The main difference here is that we not only want the right side view from before, but we also want the left side view. So to better visualize this, imagine you have yourself yet again on the right side of the tree. But now imagine you had a best friend standing on the left side of the tree. What nodes do they see from bottom to top? Well, from the bottom, they can see nodes eight, they can see node six, three, and then one. Similarly, on the right side, again, from top to bottom, we see node one, five, nine, and lastly, eight. We want to return both views in a clockwise order. Our resulting vector will hold the left side view, which again is eight, six, three, one, and then thereafter the right side view. One again, five, nine, and eight. But here's an additional requirement in the problem. We can only include the root node in our answer once. In other words, even though both people always see the root node because there's only ever one node on the first level of a binary tree, we can only have it once in our return vector. But this actually isn't too tough to handle. You'll see in the code that we just exclude it when we're processing the right side of the tree. As for any of the other nodes that are seen twice, those should be included in our answer, such as node eight. Okay, so in regards to the code, what must we adjust in our logic from before? Well, it turns out we can reuse our level order traversal BFS algorithm in the previous implementation. But this time we can add another if statement that on any given level, are we on the first node? Or in programming terms, are we on the zeroth index in our nested for loop? If it is, we can add it to a separate vector. Let's call it left side. And of course, for the right side, we can call it right side. We can go through a brief overview on the first level. 
Well, node one is both the first and the last node on the level, right? So we're gonna add it to each respectively. On the next level, obviously node three is the first node, so we're gonna add it to the left side. Moving on, at node five, it's the last node we added to the right side. On the next level, obviously, node six is the first node and thus the node that is visible to our best friend here. Let's add it to the left side. Similarly, on the right side, node nine is the last node and thus the visible node to us. Interesting to note, node seven is blocked by both sides. So it's not included in either vector. Lastly, on the last level, you have the same case as the first level. Node eight is seen and is visible by both of us. Therefore, we're gonna add node eight to both vectors. Now, once we have both, we can merge them into a mega vector called result and simply return that. Just one thing to note here, the order does matter. Remember, we want the left side from bottom up. Therefore, we wanna iterate backwards in our left side and add it to our result. So we add eight first, six, three, and then one. As for the right side, well, the first node we always see is the root node, right? That is at the first level. We can just start our loop at the first index and thereby excluding the one. Therefore, it doesn't show up twice and you add it in order, five, nine, eight according to the 598 that we saw from top down. The time complexity and space complexity remain the same as before. They're big O and respectively. And that's the gist of it. And as a last note, your interviewer may ask for a slightly more efficient algorithm. That means they're hinting for you to push both side views, left and right, into one of the existing vectors, left or right, using a two-pointer approach, which ultimately incurs less runtime and extra storage. If this is the case, feel free to tell them to screw off. No, but seriously, it's not that much more complicated. I'm not going to cover it in this video, but if you want me to cover it in a future video, let me know in the comments. All right, let's get into the code. All right, so what do we change? We're first going to remove result down here and return it once we have both views. Speaking of which, let's write those variables. You have the left side and similarly, you have the right side. Now we have the check for the last node, we now need additionally the check for the first node, that if i is at zero, that in your nested loop, you have the first node visible to the left side, let's push it back to the left side then. Let's change this to the right side for the last node, and adding the children remains the same. After we have both side views populated, let's iterate through our left side first, remember from the end to the beginning. That's how you have the right order. Let's push that back. And then lastly, you want the right side. You're gonna start at the first index, not the zero width, because you do not want the root. Keep on iterating until you're at the very end. And the last line, push back to the right side. And there you have it. You not only have the right side, but also the left side as well. That makes sense to me. Let's get into the last variant. The last variant is actually a slight modification of our previous variants, which if you didn't watch, does explain and cover most of the context. Anyway, here, instead of returning the vector of both left and right side views, we want to print them to standard console output. You'll find a reoccurring pattern that in a lot of Likud problems that Meta asks, they change it up by requiring a console out instead of returning a data structure. Looking at this example, it should make sense how we computed all these data structures. I'm not going to go over it again, but I do want to say our logic remains unchanged, except for the fact that we no longer need this mega vector, this result vector, right? Why loop through our two vectors to the result just so we can loop through it again and print things out? We already computed the left and right side views. We can simply skip a step parse our two vectors and print them out in the right order. There's no formatting requirements other than a white space in between each node value. So here we iterate backwards like we did before and print out one space two space four. For the right side, we start on the first index, remember, and we print out three space four space. It's okay if there's a space at the very end, they don't really care. As you may guess, the time and space complexities remain the same also. The changes aren't too bad to the code, so let's do it. Okay, first order of business. Since we're no longer returning our vector instead of printing it out, we now have a void function. 
This means if we're given a null pointer as a root node, we just simply return. Thankfully for us, the entirety of our BFS algorithm remains the same. What does change is that we no longer have a results vector, and instead of pushing to it, we're going to print out to console. And remember the white space. We're going to do something extremely similar for the right side, right side at that index, but also remember the white space. Lastly, let's get rid of result on line 31. And there you go. Those are the two variants. And if you learned something today, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.